funny, man. I ain't been hearing much lately about the Flint and water. Um, like, uh, it was buzzing for a minute, and then it, it just kind of uh, <clears throat> went underground. Uh, but I guess now there's going to be some kind of a presidential debate in town, which is kind of... Look, I don't, I don't like it when big politicians come to town. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it just means there'll be more outside, outsiders here rolling around, trolling the streets. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I heard that they had those militarized vehicles, the armored personnel carriers, and they had a whole bunch of dudes in ninja suits in there, and they were driving around asking people, do you need some water? And they're all sitting there with machine guns. <clears throat> so... That's what I see when when you, when there's a big event or you I guess you get exposure, just like on uh, Back to the Bricks. You go downtown and it you got all kinds of different you like uh, uniforms there. I mean you got greens and blues and just just jack boots all around. All like look, I mean they they do look intimidating with that. They got they look bigger because they got on all these vests and all these tactical vests and all this militarized gear. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it, it reminds me of, you know, you watch those black and white videos of Nazi Germany when they had those brown suits or whatever, gray suits or whatever they were called, and they would just stand there and like, as you'd walk by, they'd be like, can I see Z papers? You know what I mean? Um, which is quite crazy, but see, the bigger picture here, it's kind of like, you know, when you're standing on the street and you look around what you can see, but if you got a drone and you can go up. And then look down on the big thing, see the big picture, see what's out off in the horizon now, and what was behind you as well. You get, it's just that's what I, the perspective I'm saying is more like raising up in the present to a point where you can see what happened and where it's headed. You know what I mean? So Alex Jones, you know, he covered the Flint thing, which was kind of was kind of weird to see. You know, him the Texan. Uh, uh, tea bag in the hood up here, you know, uh, and other people, you know, uh, it, it's just, it's funny to hear that this out there that big when it's just like, you know, no one cares about, uh, local politics until I guess until it's too late or, you know, there's a reason behind it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's some kind of, uh, uh, it's an operation. And then, like I said, one of the reasons I, you know, the, for the problem reaction solution, Haglinian dialectic, uh, their schemes, it's like, you know, you, they probably wanted to survey the land some more and get some more troops of their, some, their UN, uh, diplomatic, uh, multinationals that they got working in those Israeli police force people that they be training with, you know, they got them out here scoping the land because they're probably going to do at, you know, when they do do martial law, gun confiscation, uh, FEMA camp, basically shit hits the fan for real, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna definitely come up here and try to de, uh, uh, they're probably turn into like a demilitarized zone type of a place. But that's one of the thing behind the water too. It's like when Alex Jones said he's like, man, the the, the state of Michigan has told the people of Flint basically in a way it's like they're nudging us with their elbow, like you just should leave town and get the f out of here. And I'm like, dang man, that is that is really what they're saying. They're like. You know, uh, and they're using the water to scare us as another reason to get out of town. And why do they want everyone to get out of town? See, here's the thing. Over the last few years, over the last four or five years, slowly, it's like a store will close down. And then, you know, it's no big deal. But then a gas station across the street closes down. And then another year, the car wash is gone. Um, another year... The supermarket's gone, but there's a Walmart now, uh, so no one seems to really recognize like how much they're they deindustrializing it. The fact that you see how it's deindustrialized is that there's less competition on local stores, man. You see how it's it's either a big corporation or they're out of business, basically. So they've already. As uh, not even just like when they they took the the shops and shipped them out of town and shipped them to different states and also different countries so they could get slave labor rates as opposed to paying people Americans that spend the money back into the community. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 where the money went. Is it just got? It's like 
so the corporations still are making profits and the Chinese people are making profits, but the people who hurt are, are just the regular people, the people out in the hood and in the streets. Um, um, so the, this, this water situation in a way, I, I remember watching this video and it was about Chicago and how this dude from China, this rich, you know, basically entrepreneur guy, how he, how they intentionally made it in Chicago so that it was so bad around that everyone moved out and they kind of like forced people out of these like condemned buildings. And then once they got everyone out, they go come in and buy some brand new, make some brand new buildings that you can charge regular suburban rates or you know what I'm saying? You don't have to charge them like it, like in the hood, everyone knows rent is cheap, right? So, since rent is so cheap, it's like they got to do something to force people out of town. So, once again, they have to go to somewhere where the rent's more expensive to get out of the hood or go to another hood that's not under attack and that's not under what you would call redevelopment. And that's what I think is going on in Flint and the greater area is a form of redevelopment where the multinationals... see. I've seen the, the Michigan, how they're in bed with the North American Union, where they want to uh, erase the borders, turn Mexico, add Mexico and Canada and America, and make it one one branch of the global initiative, I guess. Uh, and the Michigan, our government, like they were all saying how they got a good thing when the North American Union, uh, they're, they're making great progress in the North American Union, which I know what that means. That's like you take... Canada and Mexico, neither of them make as much money as America. So if you add them in, it's really like taken away from what America used to have because it used to be more money around here. But that's the way they're weakening us is through this economic redevelopment and redevelopment, which really is wealth redistribution. I mean, you can argue all these different reasons and motives behind it and methods that they use to do it. But I, I notice with the it's like with uh, with the college in town, if they get rid of the riffraff and then rip all the old stuff down, build up new stuff, it's the same exact thing they're doing with that uh, redevelopment in Chicago. And I mean, you it's you know we're not far. This is the Midwest. It seems like they like to do that stuff here. You also see Detroit is probably under the same fire that we are. Because once again, that was an industrial place, and it's funny now, it's kind of like, you know, it's like the Indian mascot, Indians are all gone, right? Just like here, we, you know, they got these names like a Motor City, uh, and then Flint Vehicle City, and there ain't, they ain't even making nothing here anymore. Just like, you know, with your Indian mascots, like the Indians are all gone and on reservations, I mean, they've been, uh, they've been modernized and colonialized, you know, uh. That they don't even exist no more, you know. All you got, all you got left is this mascot. But everything, the, all the back behind it is gone. And there, I think this is by design. I think we're under redevelopment, and it's kind of like a project to to push it. You know, it all. That's the way it always happens. You let in some riffraff. The dope comes in. The police come in. The guns. Uh, you know, the the gun crimes. Uh, and you, you can use that as kind of like a, as a social weapon. You push out the people who aren't used to dealing with such, uh, you know, so not everyone can hack that kind of wild, wild west. You just never know what's going to happen type of an environment. It's not as bad as it was, you know, uh, probably, but stuff still goes down around here. But it's, they use that for, you know, now it's, it's like we really need to push this redevelopment. And, uh... The water crisis also, you know, uh, in Detroit, this is how I seen they were pushing it. They were, they were taking, they, they were using the water crisis as a, and they got like locals to, to beg the UN to come in and take over it. But listen, if you, there's a, there's a show called Water Wars and it shows how all these countries in Africa where the UN's taken over, they basically have, it's, it's a form of, it's. It doesn't help. It's really just a form like they, they even pimp you. It's like kind of like when you buy drugs. If you're a nickel and dime buyer, you actually, you know, like or like with weed, you know, if you buy nickels and dimes, you end up paying 
uh, four hundred and fifty dollars for an ounce. But if you just bought the ounce, it only cost you two hundred. And it's the same principle that the UN uses through the water to make someone. You got to buy every hit of your water, basically. And it's since you're only you only can afford to buy a little at a time. In the end, it's going to cost you more money. So they keep you stuck there by manipulating supply and demand. So I, I, I'm just waiting for some kind of UN initiative or action uh, proposed in this Flint water thing. And, you know, I, I definitely feel that, listen, that there's a lot more to this. And this was broadcasted in, in a few different platforms before it happened. For instance, uh, I made a video called, uh, it's called Siasa. Ebola, Ebola scare Siasa. It was about a year ago, and it was, it was the day I remember. I was sitting next to the sink, and and air was coming out of the uh, tap. And this is in Mount Morris, and the next day I heard that they switched the water from to Flint to the Flint River, and after that, and I remember complaining about feeling like, uh, man, like I just couldn't think, like I'm like seriously, like my brain was just. Uh, cl this cloudy. I remember making a few videos about six months later after that. So that could be a effects of having you know uh, extra toxicity of you know chemicals, lead, heavy heavy metals. That's what it does. It really does slow down your brain and the fluoride. Who knows how much of that they probably gave us an extra dose of that. But on on this, there's a rock station from Flint. It's called Banana, and they said on Banana they said. Your third eye is activating. And they goes, they must be drinking the Flint water. And it has a guy, a sound of a guy going, boop, 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 drinking. And I think that now in retrospect, this was before all that. And they kind of telegraphed it and broadcasted it that there was going to be a Flint River op. Also, they said that there was a, a massive spill of chemicals in the Flint River, which turned, well, listen, which turned, which turned, a, a sewer uh, leak, which turned out to be false information. And then you never heard of the story again. Also, they said there was an Ebola in Flint, and it was on Facebook, and it was false information. And it said that the Flint water's poisoned. And then it turned out it was it was false information. So they've been leaking. They've been telegraphing or doing some kind of psyop on, on the Facebook from the people with Flint. And I remember because it's uh, my cousin's girlfriend. She kept telling me about it and showing me these things, and it was it was like basically they were doing psychological ops on people, and it, it, there's definitely some connections with the water. And this was a year. This is a year before any of this even came out. You know what I mean? So it's I, I'm wondering, like, like this is definitely some kind of problem, reaction, solution, operation, and uh, and they got the troops in here. Like like I said, it wasn't they weren't out right just uh, posted up on the corner all with uh, you know all uh, fifty calibers you know mounted machine guns on top of uh, APCs, but they were all sneaking around riding around and people thought they were the raid boys, you know what I'm saying? But they were just actually it was like FEMA man and they were all in gorilla ninja suits uh, riding around in a dang APC all. Uh, Making making the locals real nervous, you know what I mean? It's uh, that's really the way that works. When you see a when I see a bunch of soldiers, I don't feel like oh yeah help is here. I feel like oh shit, what are they gonna do? What are they planning? Uh oh, uh, is it is it Nazi? <laughs> is it the Nazi shift? The fascist shift? Shift? Is it uh, is this martial law? So. I, I see that that through the this economic redevelopment and then uh, then uh, community redevelopment. That's what I really think this what the these water wars is really about. It's they're gonna cut the tap. We're all gonna have to move out. Then they tear it all down, build new buildings, and then charge ch top rate for it. You know what I mean? So and that and that's multinationals that's doing it. The dude that was doing it in. In Chicago was a dude from China or or Japan or something. So it, it's they're doing favors for the multinationals because that's where the money at now. You know what I'm saying? So your your politicians get to benefit, but the hood suffers for it.